welcome to Conveyancing Matters with Lorraine and Stu. Join us for a chat about all things property. Hello, Mr. Forsdyke. How are you? I'm not too bad, thank you very much. Is you okay? Yeah, I'm good, thank you. Well, we've managed to provoke a little bit of controversy, Stu, um, which is why I've called this one the quill and the laptop, um, because that was a, um, a slightly snarky comment that someone chose to leave on LinkedIn. Uh, someone who I hasten to add didn't have a profile photo on their LinkedIn photo, so they obviously want to stay a little bit under the radar. But, um, but what's interested me about this whole um, YouTube journey so fast, you is that um, when we first started doing this, we thought, oh, shall we put our sort of corporate stuff in the background, um, et cetera, et cetera. Shall we sort of hide where we're sitting? And uh, people advised us and said, no, no, let, let, let your audience into your space. Yeah, let, yeah. let people see what's going on. And I'm sure during one of these at some point, you know, the dog's going to walk up and she'll be a big hit because she's really gorgeous. Um, but of course, Stu, you have got the temerity mate to be sitting in your office. And, uh, and of course, the fact that you also over one of your shoulders have got a couple of paper files uh, uh, showing other shoulder, mate, other shoulder. Uh, you've got a couple of um, paper files there, buddy. And of course, somebody felt the need to comment but what I thought was interesting is that uh, the fact that you have two paper files in view then led to the inexorable conclusion that your entire business organisation must be run purely on paper and nothing else. And what a terrible thing because PCS uh, legal aren't digital. Uh, well, the nice thing about having our own YouTube channel, Stu, of course, is we can say what we like and we can give ourselves a right of reply at any time. So, uh, so come on, mate, how much paper does a big organisation like yours use these days? And what's the score with the files behind you? First and foremost, they're actually not clients' files um, behind me. Um, there's some stuff to do with a, a, an old car I used to have. But, uh, oh, come on, what was the car? What was the car? Oh, I can't tell you about the car. It's a secret. It's an oh. old, 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 old car. Old as in old kind of old kind of antique trendy kind of thing, yeah, kind of thing, yeah, yeah. I'd like, like I'd, I'm tragedy. probably digging it up, but it's a bit of an old battle X, yeah. But there you go. Oh, okay, a bit like me. <laughs> a bit like one of the ex girlfriends, but yeah, that's it. <laughs> old battle X. <laughs> that's it. Well, but, but, don't worry, viewers. I will find out about the car in due course <laughs> and the ex girlfriends. You can rely on me. So but, back to paper files, bud. Yeah, it's, it's an interesting one, isn't it? Because um, people always assume that, you know, any big business, um, you know, should be paperless. Paperless is, um, you know, the route to sort of better communication, um, you know, slicker process, so on to fall. And whilst that is largely correct, you know, we are paperless here. We've been paperless now for probably only about maybe six months, something on those lines, uh, particularly during lockdown. It was fantastic. But especially in conveyancing, it's not as clear cut as, as people always think. Mm -hmm. So, for example, in my office at the moment, I do have some files on my desk that are about six inches thick, full of paper. And a lot of those are files. Stu, are, can I yep. just ask you there, when you say st six inches thick, do you mean like that big? Oh yeah, of course, it's got to be that big, isn't it? <laughs> a good six inches then. A good six inches, that's excellent, right. Excellent, excellent. Good six inches, that is, yeah. Well, I mean, you know, some of these files, um, firstly, I've got files here that need to be archived. I've got files here that are kind of out of archive that are more than 16 years old. So not everybody appreciates that, you know, on a sale transaction, we keep these files for, for six years plus. On a purchase, we have to keep files for 15 years plus. So some of the stuff I've got on my desk at the moment goes back absolutely ages, full of dust, come out of our storage system, and it's got to be sort of professionally destroyed. Um, so there's always going to be files knocking around in, in, in law firm offices. Um, in addition to that as well, especially where we are um, in Essex, um, we're near areas such as Canvey Island and Benfleet, where there's a huge proportion of unregistered land. That's so, yeah. yeah, so not, not all properties are registered at a land registry. Um, so not all properties can be transacted on di in, in a digital way. Um, Lots of papers um, that I looked at yesterday in some of these files were from, you know, the 1800s, not the 1900s, the 1800s. Mm -hmm. uh, and when we look for unregistered title, we have to go back, we have to follow a route of title, we have to go for an epitome that refers to documents that, that literally are hundreds of, of years of age. So, you know, you can barely read them sometimes. 
Um, they're not scannable. They're not on an A4 sort of nice format. Um, the paper's like really thick, old-fashioned cotton paper that's, you know, like almost a centimetre thick. It's been written in quill. So there it actually is. And, and when somebody says, you know, the quill versus the laptop, well, actually, the irony is there are still papers that we look at that are written with a quill pen. And that, that sounds crazy, but that is true. So there's still lots of papers that we have to look through that, um, you know, won't be on a, a computer screen, won't be on a laptop. You know, it's a hard copy paper that's, that's sitting on your desk. Um, and in addition to that as well, we have a, a large sort of age geography of client where um, some just don't like to, to transact, um, you know, via a computer. Some want old fashioned documents sent to them. You know, we still sometimes run electronic files or we print stuff off to send it to a client because they don't have printers or, or for whatever reason they, they don't want to work in that way. So, um, yeah, it's, it, it's an interesting one. And, and as far as we're concerned, we want to be digital. Um, not just because it might aid the client's sort of um, you know journey, um, but from a practice point of view, it's so much more cost effective. You know, we don't want to spend money on toners, printers, paper, cartridges, all that nonsense. You know, well, we want to be paperless for that reason. The years of storage. I mean, that's became just such a huge, huge, huge thing, didn't it? Um, and certainly, of quite a few years ago now, Stu. What um, what even happened with a lot of the big lenders? that they got very excited with um, digitization and um, particularly obviously the land register. And they saw that as sort of carte blanche to get rid of, you know, the vast amount of file and deed storage, of course, that they had. But of course, what the lenders failed to understand is that within that, you know, they have this sort of enormous great sort of funeral pyre of burning and destroying of fires to, to free up storage space and thereby cost. Uh, but in so doing, of course, um, um uh, you know binned a lot of unregistered titles because they didn't realize that that's what they were holding uh, and certainly uh, you know what i've had to do over the years on on a surprising number of occasions actually to hark back to your unregistered point is um if my clients came in with proof that the lender had acknowledged receipt of their unregistered title deeds and the lender sort of said can't find them um then we've at least been able to recoup the cost from the lender of, uh, of essentially putting that title back together and making an application uh, usually for possessory title of course with the land reg but um i also find i mean this quill and laptop thing you know i i thank the lovely faceless person for the great for the great title uh, who commented on linkedin but you know you can't help feeling that uh, you know it was a bit um, you know it was meant in a slightly sarky it wasn't meant in a more, in a warm and loving way i don't think um but I think what people do forget is, and certainly people who are, I have found some, sometimes in the digital space, as we say, they are understandably sort of evangelical about what they do. But um, again, as you say, sort of appreciating the environment within which lawyers have to work in particular. And of course, what I came across particularly in relation to meeting my clients' needs, which at the end of the day is my job, is that, um, and it's not all down to age, interestingly, but I did tend, I worked in an area where the demographic of client was slightly older, um, and lots of them, you know, just didn't want, uh, you know, documents digitally. Um, but to be quite honest, um, these days I come across plenty of clients of a much younger age who, frankly, you know, don't want to be and cannot be faffing around with a property information, a 16 page property information form, you know, on a mobile phone and it does hark back actually and so I'm you know I'm not going to go on about it but it does hark back to a point we made in an earlier uh, conveyance in matters chat Stu that um, there can be this uh, perception particularly from seller clients that you know because it's all very uh, it's very quick it's very easily accessible it's very digital they do need to understand the importance of what it is they're doing in replying to a property information form, replying to inquiries, you know, they do need attention spans to, to, to go slightly beyond that of a goldfish because um, this is important information that your buyer is entitled to rely on. And if you get it wrong or can't be bothered to answer, um, your buyer might, only might, but you know, have the right to, um, to sue you in misrepresentation. And funny enough, I'm back locuming at the moment and um, a chappie even phoned me yesterday 
and said, um, oh yes, this, this query about um, disputes and complaints on the property information form. Well, I've not had a dispute, I've not had a complaint, but you know, I did have a discussion with my neighbour about the fence and between our properties and, it, and the discussion didn't go that well, albeit it's now resolved. And he told me, I asked him and he told me the discussion was less than a year ago. And I said, look, just be factual. Disclosure is always the best course of action, even if it might lead to a negative outcome. And I think that might be a bit of a risk averse view, Stu, but, um, but interestingly and tangentially, what's your, what's your view on that sort of thing? If someone says to you, should I tell the buyer this or not? What would you say? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> always, always tell them because um, you don't want to be subject to a misrepresentation claim, you know, following conclusion of your conveyancing. And these things always have a habit of, of, of coming out in the wash. Um, yeah. You know, that we, we deal with plenty of cases um, on a month by month basis whereby a client might come back to us and say, well, you know, I've just been speaking to the neighbour and, you know, they're not happy that the fence is where it is. And, you know, they had the conversation with our sellers six months ago. And, you know, why didn't you tell me? And you look at the forms and, well, hang on a minute, it, it was never disclosed, you know. Yeah, so, is. yeah, it, it comes out regularly all the time. So the, the, it is always best to be safe than sorry. Um, you know, and, and disclose everything, and, and that way there's, there's no flies on you scenario. There's, there's yeah. another point. There's another point I really want to make actually, um, in relation to um, electronic title um, and, and working paper lists, and that is that I would say God, it could be as much as one in ten, I, I reckon, titles that are registered at the land registry have something missing. Yes. So it could be a, an, an old plan. It could be. Um, old covenants which is very common and the land registry if they don't hold um, that old conveyance that has those in there they will simply say something on the lines of not produced on first registration and that means yeah. that there could be covenants there could be rights of way there could be really important things relating to that property that weren't produced when it was first registered and that means the seller might not be aware of them you as the buyer won't be aware of them and what do you do? Um, and the only way to deal with that issue, if you haven't got any paperwork, is to insure it. But of course, the poor seller or buyer, whatever the circumstances may be, is then having to pay for insurance um, and buying a property blind. So there is, you know, a time and a place, I think, for both. And it's really important that um, from a client perspective that, you know, we're seen to be as, um, as slick and as transparent as possible. And we progress transaction transactions in general using you know the, the the best and most up-to-date technology that we can get our hands on but equally we need to have those sort of old traditional values um you know i, I still like that the, the, the fact that you know anybody can ring here speak to their their case handler fiona um you know they, they can't speak to a computer and we're still buying you know that that the house of the dreams you know the old-fashioned sort of uh, entity of bricks and mortar so for me, it's always, you know, a, a time and a place. And it's, it's, I think it's using both so that you're giving the best possible service. But, but that point on indemnity insurance, um, you know, it must be as much as one in 10, I reckon, um, titles where there could be missing documents. And I say it could be a plan, it could be a covenant, it could be a right way. Um, and that's the whole point. You know, you're buying that property. You've got a copy of the title. You should know that information. Well, I think that's the thing, because I think perhaps to conclude this... Um quill and laptop per uh, conveyance in matters to you. I mean, I think there is a perception that, um, you know, that digital is necessarily always better. And I think, um, and I hope that this chat has perhaps, you know, as we really want to try and achieve in these, in these discussions is to, is to redress the balance a bit, because what I think a lot of people, including people in our own industry, I might say, often fail to understand or, fa or, or are not willing to understand, quite frankly, is um, just the hugely difficult job that all conveyances and all coalface conveyances have and face every single day. And as you say, you know, in conclusion, Stu, there's absolutely no doubt that those firms that have been able to sort of pivot, um, you know, to working at home, to doing stuff electronically, uh, you know, have coped better in lockdown. There's no doubt about that, I would say. Um, but, you know, everything digital is, is not the only answer. 
Um, and as you said at the start, I think it is all about uh, meeting client needs. Um, and, uh, you know, any, any lovely uh, people working in the digital world out there, you know, if you want to come and have a chat to us, you know, I'm sure we'd be delighted to hear from them, wouldn't we, Stu? Most definitely. Great. Well, uh, hopefully that's uh, provoked a bit of interest and, uh, and we'll get um, maybe some slightly less chippy comments on, uh, on um, LinkedIn. But in the meantime, mate, I'm expecting to see another two files behind you uh, in the next discussion. Go ahead. <laughs> All right. Take care. Take care. Bye. Bye.